tape on uh, R&B and blues triads and some hot licks to go with them. So let's get started by just doing a quick tune-up and you can reference this because VCRs play in real time so you should be okay with the note you take <clears throat> right off of your TV. Okay, uh, here's the first string, the E. Whoops, better have some volume. Here's the B. The G, the D, the A, and the low E. Okay, we'll switch to a full screen view here uh, with a little bit of my mug shot here in the picture just so you can give some eye contact or whatever but I'm looking at a monitor so I won't always be looking you in the eye. Anyhow, um, let's examine. I'm going to just do some of this stuff in the key of, of D <clears throat> but there'll be some other things in the key of A and stuff like that and we have about an hour of this. So probably the very simplest triad that's highly effective and most of you are looking for advanced material probably already know this but I'm going to show you some things to do with triads that you probably haven't thought of before um, and I don't know where I learned them I just learned them along the way and I'm sure I learned them from the, the better guitarists that I listened to and occasionally got to watch anyhow the straight bar across the first three strings is actually the top side of a minor chord bar chord um, it's also used in the ninth chord it's used a lot in R&B and blues and um, in this case I'm using it on the uh, the context of the fifth string root bar chord however you want to play the chord and um, it can also be used along with this chord the only thing I'm doing is a bar right there and then these this root note right there which is a D but anyhow so what I was playing there before I um, came in and started making a fool out of myself was uh, <clears throat> I was going um, on the D root Most of you should already know that. Then I switched right there, and I, I use my thumb a lot because it allows me more versatility. That means that these fingers don't have to be tied up pinning down low notes. So I moved right to the G root. That happens to be the top side of an F triad, but it also happens to be a, a superimposed over G root. It, it becomes kind of a G sus, a G9 sus, if you will. That's probably precisely what it is, because it has the fourth, the flatted seventh, and the ninth tone. And then you have a couple of options here. You could go to the, um, the, the triad from the G chord, or you could go to the uh, this one, which I kind of like better, um, and this is actually uh, an E minor triad. It's also the top side of a G6 chord. So if you don't know that kind of stuff, you're going to have to get out a little theory and stack up the chords. And if you need some help with that, you can e email me. Um, 
instruction at craigtarwater.com and I'll send you back some stuff that'll help you sort that out. Anyhow, so... And this is just kind of a standard little progression ditty that people do a lot of times and it sounds really cool. It's going to the sharp fifth chord, which is a B flat. And then what I did on the intro to this tape, um, I'll go ahead and do it right now. Instead of going, I went. Essentially, that's just a, an A minor triad, top side of a G chord, a F sharp minor triad, top side of a D chord again, and then another uh, G triad, a D triad, and then a F7 sus triad. Using that, um, not using either one of these two fingers in the middle. Um, I don't use my second finger a lot on stuff um, because it allows me to keep my hands shaped for for being able to you know to play notes like. So uh, anyhow, let's go back here a bit so we don't get lost. right off to this part right here because what's happening here is this works really good for a straight rhythm thing that would allow you to to in, in a three chord fashion uh, and that's your uh, four chord the G7 sus and your five chord You could be the only guitarist, but um, you would actually be uh... um, so then you could move to. Uh... and a little delay and the reason I do that it kind of gives you um, sort of like a quasi Hammond organ sound which is pretty cool and uh, I played it in many settings with people when I was just comping behind whoever was singing or soloing and, and people went nuts for it because it just sounds really smooth okay so we'll just do this whole thing down here and then we can intersperse it with this first part and then I'll show you some some other things that you can do too because we do have uh, um, some things we can do. All right, so. Stated like the beginning of a song ought to be, so you have some dynamics. Then you move up um, when you come to the end of it. Thank you. 
let's look at uh, the triads that we can use in to do more complex chord progressions like uh, for instance maybe we might be going um, <laughs>
you can use a bunch of double stop things to go in there. <laughs> stuff over that kind of a bass line and um, and you don't have to leave your position either really if you want to just stay right here you can triads like you're doing here right here so you can keep you can move your triads across string sets of uh, uh, essentially the first three strings the second three strings um, the third three strings, and I'm working in pairs of uh, one, two, three, uh, two, three, four, three, four, five, and there are some on four, five, six, and we can get into those uh, now. Now, <clears throat> if you think about R and B or rhythm and blues, essentially, I believe you're talking about uh, this kind of music. Uh, but at the same time, it could be something funky. It could be like, you know, uh, more soul, soul funk music, like. through this simplistic stuff I'm doing. Okay, so a, a quick breakdown of playing your chords and then looking at the triads and then by just playing groups of three notes out of the chord will lead you to all kinds of discoveries on uh, triads and you'll have a, a well-rounded view of it. Let's take a look at something, say, in the key of uh, A. I could use G, but I'll use, I'll use A for a minute and we'll see how that goes, okay? So um, we could uh, start on... Um, the four chords say uh, okay um, then for instance we begin to use okay so we have a top side of a D chord F sharp minor, another inside um, inversion of a G chord, um, inversion of a D chord, an A 
seven triad, literally the G, the C sharp, and the E, and that's all there is. And then you can raise the third to the fourth and take it back off again. And I'm barring right there. simple doing kind of the same thing I was doing on the starting figure just uh an old R and B chord um, essentially it's um, it's a sharp five it's a seven sharp five, and it's an E seven sharp five, and it's pretty cool. You can even drop it off to the full E augmented if you want, but I probably wouldn't myself. Um, some really cool stuff here because uh, you can take advantage of the open chord <coughs> um, the open A chord and I, that's kind of the way I always play it I play the A note and the triad and my thumb sits here to block out the sixth string and my uh, first finger just rises up enough so that I can strike all six strings some trick triads here um, I mean they're simple but they just sound really cool and there's a little note um, previously I had been doing starting with the fifth and that's as high as you can invert. So we have five, one, and flat three of the B minor triad over the uh, open A note. And then that allows us to go um, back to the A triad because we just see all three fingers go on and off like piano keys. And that's how you want to learn how to use your triads when you're doing that stuff. Noting it's an A major add nine triad. It's got the fifth, the ninth, and the third. And then this sus triad. You can even finger pick that. 
too. But, uh, you know, that might be in some of the more modern R&B because they're getting to sound kind of, uh, you know, different than the older R&B. But at any rate, you have a tremendous spread of things you can do just on the A chord and you can actually move all this up on the fingerboard and I don't have a camera operator because I'm doing this myself so I might pan my guitar here in a second. Let's just take a look at this just for A. <laughs> So far, it's pretty simple. It's a G, an A triad followed by a G triad back up to an A, then an F sharp minor triad to the G triad, an A E minor triad, and an E triad to a A seven triad, which you're only fretting one finger, the uh, the C sharp note. And the third and the strings are open. Same one I'm doing here. A G, C sharp, and E. G, C sharp, and E. While I'm at it, you should be able to play any triad um, that you can do uh, like this. You should be able to that kind of a thing where you can play them in the same pitch register. And uh, we can't even see this one. There's one right there, too. Okay, but anyhow. They become uh, more inspirational for me if I can turn on a little bit of effects, not because they don't sound good playing, but just it starts to sound pretty big, you know, and it's just this one little Stratocaster here. <laughs> or G accidentally but it sounded pretty cool so we'll do this again <laughs> you can see probably to this point is that if you can do something in this type of area where your home chord is a fifth string root chord um, possibility. 
abilities. When you start playing with uh, less than three notes, the left, just two notes of the triads, then you can really get, um, you know, pretty ingenious and really fill in a lot of holes without playing too much. When you're maybe say the lead and rhythm instrument, ideally that's where we're coming from here. You're, a, you're say the lead guitar, but you have to, to play rhythm and you have to play with a keyboard player. And this is kind of how keyboard players would play too, the chords they would choose, which should lead you to figure out that um, if you conflict with a keyboard player by just blindly playing your repetitive finger habits, you're never going to be accepted in the peer group. You need to play as a team player. So what you do is you try to steal all the keyboard stuff you can on the guitar. And that's what I've done for some years of my 45 plus years of playing now. And that's why I'm, I'm showing you this stuff, because this is really the right thing to do if you're playing R&B. Okay, so if you're using, say, just double stops, then you have a, a chance to be able to go, uh, um, and we can go back to A here, you know, for this example, because we'll still play some stuff that will be done in D. So for instance, <coughs> country but if you listen to uh, a lot of the new country you'll find that it's pretty heavily R&B influenced and uh, that's why anyhow uh We're doing the same things as if we were in D, uh, we're just two frets lower, so... for turning around, it's a, an A7, sharp 5. There's other ways to play that, but they don't really sound right, like you can go... But the sharp 5 sounds weird. Or, it just sounds too weird. This one sounds sweet and harmonious, so that's the one you should use. And then, while you're in on the subject of C, uh, from the fifth string root pers perspective, uh, you can use the C open seven. I like to alternate between the sussing or putting the fourth in place of the third and then taking it off, and that just sounds really good once again with a little chorus and delay. two fingers or three fingers if necessary 
and that gives me the, the real smooth sound. There's no pick noise. That's the pick, but here's Claude. string root chords and the six string root chords and your chord progressions are whatever you choose whatever the song might be um, but the triad work is all, almost exclusively the triads are major and minor triads either very closely voiced meaning they're like every other note on the staff or uh, in this case, uh, um, there's a skip because that's a fourth. Uh, on the staff, your notes are thirds, and thirds are the closest voicing you can do, unless you want to do something like a second, which those do also exist. Um, maybe we should talk about them uh, just for a second because I would like to put in some things about minor here too. So let's just take a little look at this then. Um, okay, there's what's... Uh, some people call this a sus too, but from this root I can't do that in good conscience. I'd have to call it a... Um, it's an add nine. Um, so, uh, anyhow, it can be used very effectively. upper version of it okay that's just the fifth note on top but what you have here then is a uh
basically like on a minor chord, say on an A minor. <laughs> some minor things and they sound pretty cool. Uh... three chords as a rule. They don't have to be. Uh, there's other things you can do in minor. If you want to walk down, you can have your... your and you can do that, of course, still in three chords. throwing in instead of doing just a half step on the dominant chord whatever it is like yeah. which sounds fine but I was using a, a major uh, nine chord uh, F major nine right there
course, this this is a major. I'm sorry, a minor add nine. <laughs> seven triad and there I was using a G triad actually a G chord but either either of two triads make the whole chord with an open uh, E to your A minor 7 if you're doing <clears throat> an R&B or a blues song in uh, the key of A minor. <laughs> Since if you're uh, wanting to be more sophisticated uh, in the minor, and I'll put on my little effects here, it just gives me more brain food. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. 
you say, um, okay, well, I haven't really seen what I consider to be hot licks yet. Um, <clears throat> I think if you, if you can absorb what I've been showing here, you probably realize they are hot licks if you can absorb them. But at any rate, um, for instance, if we just want to play um, like the first type of thing we did here, uh, smooth blues thing. And I think I'll just do it in uh, C this time, okay? So we got... <coughs> something like uh, oh let's kind of do it like this <laughs> about the bass 
note licks that you can do too. If you're in um, 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 the major context, you can be using either minor or major pentatonic uh, riffs like. <laughs> Okay, take it easy.